In this video, I'm going to show you how I made the chef hat for Elle from Elle's Hack Shack. I'll also show you how you can applique letters or other shapes onto fabric. I'm using an old bar apron for the fabric. It's nice thick cotton. And I'm guessing Elle will be able to appreciate that this hat was used to serve beer in its previous life. For the headband, I cut a rectangle that's 18 by 65 centimeters. I then cut out the largest circle that I could out of the rest of the fabric. I ended up with a diameter of 62 centimeters. The larger the circle, the floppier the hat will be. And yes, that is the official sewing term. Or at least it is now. And then it's time for the applique. I printed the letters in the right size from a screenshot of Elle's channel banner. And then I cut the letters out of the paper and traced them onto fusible webbing. This is basically a transferable layer of glue on a sheet of paper. Make sure to trace the reverse image. I roughly cut the letters out and ironed the exposed glue onto the green fabric. Then I cut out the letters. Now I can remove the paper and iron the letters onto the headband. To make sure the letters stay in place, I stitched a tight zigzag all the way around. And that's how you do applique. To make the headband hold its shape better, I added a layer of fusible interfacing to the front half. This can simply be ironed on. I'll also use this opportunity to iron the fold into the headband. I cut around the edges of the headband with pinking shears to prevent it from fraying. Next I'm going to attach velcro to the headband. I marked the seam allowance and cut 8cm pieces of velcro. I pinned the pieces in the right place and stitched them down. By the way, you always want the soft side of the velcro to point towards your skin so that it doesn't scratch you. And the final addition to the headband is my label. To finish the headband, I folded it right sides together and stitched the two ends closed. I need to make a slit in the top to allow the size of the hat to be adjusted. To do this, I mark the slit and stitch around it as reinforcement. Then I cut the slit open. Now I need a piece of bias tape, which is a strip of fabric cut at a 45 degree angle to the grain direction of the fabric. I decided to use the green fabric again for a nice color accent and I cut a strip of 25 by 5 cm. I folded it in half and ironed it to make a crease, and then I folded each of the sides towards the middle and ironed creases there as well. Now I have my bias tape. I pinned the open bias tape to one side of the slit, opening it up to allow for this. I then stitched on top of the crease. Next I folded the bias tape towards the other side of the fabric, pinned it down and stitched it close to the edge. Stitching around the top of the slit can be a bit tricky, so make sure to take your time there. To finish the slit, I folded one side of the bias tape to the inside and pinned it in place. To attach the top of the hat to the headband, it needs to be gathered around the edge. To do this, set the stitch length to the maximum, and for me that's 5mm. Then sew two lines of stitching around the edge of the circle. Leave long tails on the beginning and end and do not backstitch. On one side tie a knot in the top two threads. On the other side tie a knot in the bottom two threads. Mark the quarter point of the circle with pins. And now gently pull on the three threads to gather the fabric. This actually turned out to be the most time consuming step for me, because my fabric is quite rough and it was hard to slide over the thread. My threads even broke at some point, so I removed them and stitched three lines of gathering stitches this time, so there was less force on each of the threads. Eventually I got the gathering done. I folded the top edges of the headband inside and ironed them down. Then I marked the quarter points of the headband as well. Now I can slide the edge of the top inside the headband. I'm lining up the quarter points to make sure that the gathering is distributed evenly. I pinned it all in place and then I sewed along the top of the headband. I didn't catch all of the fabric at the back, 
So I added a second line of stitching just below the first one to make sure everything is properly attached. And that's how I made the chef hat. So Al, I hope you like it. And if you feel like mixing it up a little bit, you can always wear it in different ways. There's the classic, of course. But then you can also try the triangle, the hi-hat, the French beret, the Swedish chef, the pizza top, or even the headless chef. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.